Okay, for this video here, we're going to do a spin stabilization of a satellite. So sometimes you might be in a situation, well, I say you, but uh, you might want to spin the satellite at a constant velocity. So the idea is, is that you have some uh, commanded angular velocity that you want to spin the system at, and you want to design a controller. Your equations of motion, we'll leave that blank for now, but we're going to assume the input is some torque and the output is angular velocity. We're going to assume unity feedback, and we're going to go from there, okay? So that's a generic control block diagram, so let's write the equation. Let's first draw a, a picture of what we're doing here. So let's assume we have some satellite. It's got some center of mass. It's got a uh, coordinate frame. And I'm assuming that there are thrusters here and here. And this could be some input F1 and some input F2, and this could be some, some distant D. But just to make the math easier, I'm just going to assume that you can apply some torque, that's the input. And for all intents and purposes, it's, it's a F1 plus F2 times D. Um, but I'm just going to assume torque is my input just to make the uh, problem simpler. If it's spinning this in this direction here, uh, this is the angle theta. Theta dot is then omega. And then the uh, angular velocity, theta double dot, is alpha, which is also omega dot. Okay? The equations of motion for this system, you write the sum of the moments equals the inertia. So I'm assuming this has some mass and some inertia. Moment of inertia about this rotational axis. So sum of the moments is equal to j times the angular velocity, alpha. The moments on the system are just the torque, tau. I'm assuming that I'm in deep space and the disturbance torques are negligible. This is going to be equal to J. Alpha is omega dot. And remember, I'm trying to control omega. So I don't actually need the second derivative. I'm just going to have one derivative here. So these are my uh, equations of motion here. And then I can take a Laplace transform of both sides. If I assume that the initial conditions are zero, so if it's initially at rest, okay, I can take Laplace on the left side. I'm going to say that the uh, torque in the Laplace domain is capital T, and then I'm going to do J omega, that's the Laplace, that's the, uh, Laplace transform of uh, angular velocity in the Laplace domain, that's this notation, it's not actually a thing. There's one dot, so I get one S, and then my transfer function, omega is the output, and tau is the input, so I need output over input, and so that's going to be 1 over j s. And there is my transfer function there. Okay? I'm going to create uh, some numbers here. I'm just going to assume that j is 3 kilogram meter squared. And so I'm going to put 1 over 3s um, right there. Okay? So then the question is, is um, you know, what sort of problem? You have your transfer function. We can start talking about it and determine some things about it. So for one, my... I'm going to draw a G here. G is uh, marginally stable. And the reason why I know that is because there is a, the poles are one, all right, poles S equals zero. There is one pole at the origin. That means it's first order. And the numerator is just a one. So that means that there are no, there are no zeros. So there are none, no zeros. And then the gain is the numerator, the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the numerator coefficient of the denominator, which is just one third. So that's the gain. It's marginally stable, but I have a pole perfectly at the origin. So if I draw a real imaginary axis, I've got one pole at origin. And since I have one pole at the origin, that actually means that I have an integrator, which actually means that this system is type one. This is a type one system, okay? Now for this example, I want this system to track a constant angular velocity. So omega c, I want the input to be a step or a constant, you know, something like that. So if I want uh, a step input, what sort of transient response do I want? Well, I probably want a settling time of, let's say 10 seconds. So I want it to get to the command velocity, angular velocity, in 10 seconds. And then I also want the steady state error 
to be zero. So then the question becomes, what do you make C? Well, the nice thing about the fact that this system is uh, marginally stable is that it has an integrator, which means that for a type one system, the steady state error is automatically zero. So this is like desired, desired, and it turns out that C can be type zero. And the reason why C can be a type zero system is because you already have a type one system in your plan. If I was hitting the system with a ramp input and I wanted zero steady state error, I would have to add an integrator, in which case I would need an integrator in my controller. So that means if you're looking at control design, you know, you have P, I, and D, so you have proportional integral derivative. Integral gain is bas basically used to reject disturbance, and in this case, I have no disturbances, I'm ignoring them, or it's used to get rid of steady state error. Well, in this case, because my type of my plant is one, I don't need integral gain. So I don't need integral gain at all, okay? I have a first order system here, and so I also don't need derivative gain. Derivative gain is used to get rid of oscillations, but I have a first order system, so the system doesn't oscillate anyway. So I don't need any oscillation control on a first order system, again, because the system is first order. So I really just need proportional control on this. So that means I just need C to be equal to KP, okay? So if I come up here, and I'm gonna leave it just because I'm gonna take a picture of this at the end. Let me get my, where's my stool? Hang on. I went off camera, I'm sorry. So now I have C is KP, so let's close the loop here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cascade first. So I'm gonna do K, I'm gonna do the, these two together, and I'm gonna get uh, well I, let's just do this all in one step, right? So this is C, this is G, um, H is one. The closed loop formula, G closed loop, is C G over one plus C G H. So that means it's just gonna be three KP over 3s all over, wait, why did I get 3kp? It's 1kp over 3s over 1 plus c, which is kp, over g, which is 3s, times h, which is 1. I need to get rid of the improper transfer function, so I'm going to multiply by 3s over 3s, and I get kp over 3s plus kp. You'll see that my final value is kp over kp, which is one, which means my steady state error is zero. My pole is negative KP over three, okay? And so now we have to look at the settling time formula. So the settling time formula for a first order system, I believe is four divided by A, where A is your pole. So that if settling time is 10, and I need to take the absolute value of my pole, if assuming it's stable, it's going to be 4 over A, which is 3 over KP. The KP flips up, and you get, uh, well, really what you can do is you can just multiply both sides by 3 fourths, and you get uh, 10 times 4 over 3 is KP. And if you have a calculator, you can compute that. 40 over 3 is like, what, 12-ish, 13-ish. So uh, that, that's the KP that you need to spin stabilize the system um, and get the settling time of 10 seconds and ESS of zero. Uh, hopefully this was an enlightening video and if you have any questions, post in the comments and hope you have a nice day.